Hello. In this video, I'm going to be going over everything you need to know on how to start a career in digital or computer forensics. I'll be going over exactly what digital forensics is. I'll be going over the skills you need in order to go into the field of digital forensics. I'll be going over what a day in the life looks like as someone who works in digital forensics. I'll be going over a really good place to start with digital forensic courses, the salary of digital forensic, what credentials and education that you need, and stay to the end of the video and I'll be going over step-by-step step on how you can land a career in digital forensic. So if we go to Indeed, there are about 5,000 job openings that are asking for computer or digital forensics. And remember, it goes by many different names. Um, so it could be called a computer forensic investigator, digital analyst, digital forensic analyst, and computer forensic analyst. Just depends on the company. If you are new to my channel, I'm Nicole, and this channel is all about helping you upskill and land a job in tech and everything that I wish I had known when first starting out. Also, I do have a free how to land a job in cybersecurity course below. So go ahead, check that out. So while you're down there checking out that free course, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe. Now, if you have ever watched those, those criminal investigation shows, I'm sure you've seen the digital forensic analysts people. This career may have intrigued you. Essentially what digital forensic analysts do or investigators is that they gather, analyze, and preserve evidence evidence from technology devices, phones, drives, and laptops for legal purposes. So you're most likely going to be dealing with law enforcement a lot of the time. However, there are digital forensics jobs and incident responder jobs that don't deal with the law enforcement on a database basis, but only when it becomes more serious and the company needs to bring in law enforcement. And so I'm sure you're wondering, what does a day in the life look at like as a computer forensic analyst? Some of the the daily duties that you might do is you're going to be conducting forensic examinations on digital evidence research and development activities and perform search and seizure operations. This is what you see on all of those criminal investigation shows. You're going to perform computer forensic examination, electronic discovery, data recovery analysis, and incident response. Uh, you may be reconstructing and recovering damaged RAID arrays or on both Windex and Unix operating systems. You could be performing forensic exams trying to find deleted, hidden, and unallocated files. So just deleting a file doesn't mean it's actually been deleted. Also, you're going to be collecting and documenting forensics. Documenting is extremely important because a thing called the chain of custody. And if it ever wants to go to court, you need really good documentation. And so if you mess this up, there's a lot of like, <laughs> it's just, it won't be a good day for you. And some really good skills you're going to need is you're going to need to know what the chain of custody is, data integrity, and all of the steps that go into that. Digital forensics, computer forensic analysts always follow a very strict schedule and of to keep data integrity. And those steps are identification, preservation, analysis, documentation, and presentation. And that right there is a core skill you're going to need to know to become a digital forensic analyst. Um, you're also going to need to know various types of tools and how to use tools. Some really popular digital forensic tools that I see a lot on job postings um, is the FTK imager. And this is response to collect digital evidence. You're going to be using NCASE, and this is a shared technology within a suite of digital investigation products by Guidance Software. Really good stuff to know. Also, Autopsy would be a really good digital forensic tool to know. This one is often used by law enforcement and the military. You can even use it to recover photos from an old memory card. The salary according to Zipia is around $50,000. However, you can make a lot more than $50,000. I believe this is so low because most of people who work in digital forensics or on computer forensic probably work for government agencies and government agencies often pay really low compared to what you can make in the private sector. I've seen digital forensic jobs for 100,000 to 150,000. And as you become more skilled, you can definitely command way more money and maybe even 
make your own consulting company. Another question is what type of degrees and credentials do you need to become a digital forensic analyst and work with computer forensics? The question is you, you don't necessarily need a degree. However, if you're going to work within the government as a computer forensic analyst, they really like to see degrees. Government really just loves when you have that piece of paper. But if you go to with a smaller company in the private sector, oftentimes you're not going to need a degree in cybersecurity or digital forensics. Um, oftentimes a certificate and a portfolio would be probably good enough to get a entry level job in digital forensics. And if you are looking for some good digital forensic certificates, uh, there aren't that many that are HR approved meaning they're not well recognized in the industry, but one is the NCASE Certified Examiner. NCASE is a really good uh, tool you're going to need to know. And so if you want structure to prevent information overwhelm, this is a really good certificate to start with. And there was some other ones, but when I check them out, their websites seem a little shady, even though they show up a lot on job boards. I just didn't like their website. <laughs> uh, I do, and as for digital forensic courses, I do have a link below for some really good courses. I would mention them, but they'll probably change over time. And so it's a lot easier just to post them below. So go check those out. And how can you start a career in digital forensics? Well, the first step is you're going to need to know the basics of IT. And that includes operating systems. And because you're in digital forensics, you're really going to need to know Unix and Windows operating systems, uh, maybe some Linux. You're going to need to know what networking is and what exactly a network is to include the OSI model, what is a router, what is a switch, and things of that sort. So the second step is you're going to need to learn to know the basics of cybersecurity. So do you know what confidentiality, integrity, do you know what authentication is or non-repudiation and those types of terms? Do you know what governance, risk and compliance is or risk management? Do you know? I'm just going to stop now. The list could go on and on. You need a solid basis of cybersecurity topic. The third step is you're going to want to learn the basics of digital forensics before jumping in and getting your hands dirty with those projects. Uh, I do have a really good course below. So learn the concepts around digital forensics before diving deep into building experience. And the fourth step is to build a portfolio of work that you're doing. And that's where you're going to learn the most. But if you don't know what you're doing, it can be kind of hard to figure out what to do, which is why I say learn the basics of digital forensics first, and then create those projects and document and put that on your resume. Also, I do have that free course below on how to start a career in cybersecurity. So go ahead and check that out. Totally free if you're confused. And I do have an entire playlist of answering all of the questions that you may have about starting a cybersecurity or cloud career, check that out, including the best cybersecurity certificates to start with. I'll put that right here and I will see you in the next video. Bye.